Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to go over a new feature that's currently only in the beta version of Photoshop, but I found it's working pretty well, so I expect it to be out of beta very soon. Now, if you're not familiar with the beta version of Photoshop, if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you could download the beta version of Photoshop, and with it, you'll be able to access some features that aren't yet in the current version of Photoshop. At the end of this video, I'll show you how you could download the beta version of Photoshop. Now, as you can see, I have the beta version of Photoshop open. And let's just say I wanted to remove the girl from the scene. Now, if I were using the current version of Photoshop, there is, in my opinion, only one practical way to do that, and that is to use generative AI. To use generative AI, I would need to get a selection of the woman. And there's all different ways I could do that. Um, let's just say I think maybe the quickest way is to use object selection. So I'll click on the little selection tool icon here, and I'll make sure I'm grabbing the object selection tool. And with it, you can see it has the spinning wheel. It's detecting things that are in the scene, specifically the people. So I'll go to select people. And I'll click on the girl's face on the little icon here. I'll make sure I'm selecting the entire person. And I'll click Apply. And then you'll see in a second or two, there's marching ants going around her. Now, it didn't get some of her fingernails over here. So I'm going to improve the selection by getting the Quick Selection tool. Make sure I'm using an Add Brush. And then I'll just come in here and I'll just quickly add her fingernails. I just, I don't need it to be exact. Just need it to be a little better. I don't want it to leave remnants of her fingernails on the man's face. Okay, so I have this selection of the girl. And I mentioned if I were using the current version of Photoshop, there's one practical way to do this, and that's using generative AI or specifically generative fill. On the contextual taskbar, you can see there's a button for generative fill. If you don't see the contextual taskbar, go to the window menu and then go down here and make sure that the contextual taskbar has a check mark next to it. We'll click on generative fill and if you want to replace something just don't write anything in the prompt and just click generate. Now what will happen is it will send your image up to Adobe and from their servers it will come up with something for this space and what you will find is it will often just replace a person with an object, or in this case, another person. And you can see they're uh, very kind of mutant-looking people have been added there. So that is a downfall of using generative fill to replace something, particularly if that something is a person. You'll get another person or sometimes just like weird things added to the image. The other downfall or the other thing that is bad about doing it this way is you're going to be using generative credits when you do this. So theoretically, it could cost you money because you get so many generative credits with your subscription. But if you do this a lot, eventually you'll probably use up all those generative credits and then you'll have to buy more. So it would cost money. This new method doesn't use generative credits to do this and it works better. So I'm going to undo what I just did by hitting command Z or Z on my keyboard a number of times till I'm back to the original model with the marching ants. Now I mentioned this new feature is a remove feature and it is on the contextual taskbar as well. It's right here, remove. Just click on this and then it will take a second. You'll see there'll be a little progress bar up here. It's not sending the image up to Adobe servers. It's all being done locally on your computer. And most often, it does a great job, just like it did. Now, the other maybe downside to it is it doesn't give you three variations. It just does it once. So hopefully it worked well and just got rid of the whatever it is you're getting rid of um, perfectly. And in this case, I think it did. There is some discoloration, I think, on the brick wall in the background. But overall, you could see it definitely did a better job than the generative fill option that I've done before. Now, those of you that have used generative fill a lot, you know that often it works better if you get a loose selection around the person instead of getting an exact selection. So instead of using the object remove or even quick selection tool or anything like that, you would use usually the lasso tool. And let's say I want to remove the man um, 
on the right side of this uh, scene here. So I'll get a loose selection by just painting around his body like this, down here, go across the bottom, come up through here. I'm going to overlap on our arm a little bit. That's just the way you would do it. And then make sure that you capture the shadow as well. And then come back up here and close our selection. So now we have a loose selection of the man. I'll click generative fill again. And again, we're not going to write anything in the prompt. You don't want to write a, like remove or anything like that because it won't work well. It usually works better if you don't write anything. And then click generate. Now again, it's going to send the image up to Adobe servers and it is costing me some um, generative credits to do this. And again, you'll notice, I guarantee, even though I don't know what it's going to do exactly because it's a crapshoot, but sometimes it works perfectly. But then other times it does really weird stuff. So in this case here, that actually worked well. But again, it's a crapshoot. I could have just as easily got three people in here. I could have got a plant in there. Sometimes it just does weird things. So I'm going to undo this again by hitting Command Z or Z on my Mac. It's Control Z or Z on a PC. So I'm back to the marching ants. And I'll just click Remove. And again, it won't be sending anything up um, to Adobe servers at all. It will just remove the person from the scene and usually what I found it works perfectly the first time and it really has to because again it doesn't give you three variations it just you know you get what you get so hopefully it works well and you can see it did it worked well so that is the new remove function now I do have some recommendations if you have a scene such as this and I wanted to remove the uh, woman with the backpack and see how her hair is kind of all frizzied out here. Uh, if I did want to use the remove instead of generative AI to remove her, if I were to say uh, use the object selection tool and I'll let it get, you know, the spinning wheel here, and then I'll go to select people, I'll select her. Now I'll click apply. It didn't select her backpack, so I need to add that. So I'll click on the backpack. But you'll see that it has some like marching ants kind of in here, like here and here. Um, what I found actually, you don't really need to remove those. They seem to actually don't matter, but I will just for this demonstration. So there, there isn't an excuse there that I left Martin Ants in the middle. But you'll notice like her frizzy hair, like I don't know what to call frizzy, but her hair that's kind of out. When I do use the remove function, um, most often what I found it will do is it will leave an outline of the person there. Now, again, it's kind of a crapshoot, and I only have one variation. So it may work really well, or it may not. In this case, you could see the outline right here. See how that outline is there? So what I recommend is with the remove uh, function, I'm going to undo, get rid of the marching ants totally, is if you're going to use it, if you can get a loose selection, and most often you'd use the lasso tool for that. And what you'll find is if you do the loose selection like this, instead of the tight selection, just like usually generative fill will work better with a loose selection. Oops, didn't want to do that. Oh, we'll add that later. And then I'll go to the add. I'm on the add, so we'll add this part. I kind of had the coffee caffeine jitter there. So, all right, so we have a loose selection of the subject, and then we'll click remove again. And again, this stays locally. It's not going up to Adobe servers, and it's not costing me any generative credits. And you'll see that it says removing area and you have that progress bar. And really how fast it goes depends on your machine and it depends on the complexity of the scene. Uh, so you can see it did a really nice job. And again, it only gives you the one variation. And I've tried this. I'm not going to do it in the video, but I tried it using generative fill uh, with the object. And it often would try to put a tree in here for some reason. And in some cases, it looked okay. It looked like it belonged. But in other cases, it didn't look well at all. But you can see here that it usually... I think every single time I've tried it uh, with the uh, just the remove, this new remove thing that's in beta, it worked well. So you can see how that works. Now, I mentioned that if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you could download the beta version of Photoshop. It doesn't cost you any extra. It's included in your subscription. To do that, open up the Creative Cloud app. And when you do, you'll be in this home position right here. Click on the apps icon and then right here, beta. 
And depending on your subscription, like I subscribe to everything. So I have all these different applications that I could download in beta or the beta version. And you can see I have the Photoshop beta here. It's already installed. If it wasn't, it would have an install button like Premiere Pro has a beta or an install button here and so on. And it could cohabitate to your computer with the current version of Photoshop. It works independently of the current version of Photoshop. So you could have them both running at the same time. You could be doing one something in one of them and something else in the other one. So it's not going to mess up your current installation of Photoshop at all. And you could just uh, delete it if you don't want it anymore. Click on these three dots right here. And then you could go down to uninstall. And it will uninstall it from your system. So that's it. That's this new feature that, as I mentioned, is currently in the beta version of Photoshop. But as you can see, it's working pretty well. And I expect it to be coming out of beta very soon. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.